The story I'm about to tell you is not a fairy tale. Even if it talks of werewolves, the devil, and much worse still. It happened to me and my two brothers in that forsaken month of December 1858, near the village of Wolvesville in Lower Canada. Weird intro aside, welcome to Sang Freud. Tome 1, in fact. Uh, I'm gonna be playing through it. Why? Because I feel like it. I've already done the first mm, five of the days. Uh, you can see actually the calendar back here goes by days. Each day will be a separate video. Uh, actually, well, yeah, each day will probably be a separate video. Uh, the first three days, I believe, are technically tutorials. This game has a lot of tutorial videos, which uh, I figured I may as well leave in. I'm also going to do that, because otherwise it's extremely loud, so there might be a little bit of an audio discrepancy at the beginning there, but uh, yeah. I'm going to be playing as this fellow here on the... and then she gets possessed. I'm going to be playing as this fellow on the right there. He is the standard difficulty. Uh, this guy is high difficulty. He's not good in melee. He's, I guess, alright in melee. Uh, or physical, or, you know, self-attacks, whatever, you know. <laughs> Maybe you don't, I don't know. Difficulty normal. Normal? Jo- Joss- Joss? I think it's Joss. Uh, excels both in close combat and with traps. He's a sickly child, apparently. Doesn't look very sickly now. Uh, took a job as a lumberjack. Well, that would be why. We will choose Sir Joss. Uh, pick that one. I'm going to be doing this more or less blind after the uh, the first so many days. I believe five. Uh, but before that, I know what I'm doing. I've got the general gist of the game, and I've got the general gist of mechanics. So, But I will leave the tutorials in, because it explains it better than I ever will. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there are 24 days. There are 24 highlighted days, so that's what I imagine what it would be. Uh, there will be 24 videos, if you haven't caught on yet. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start on the 5th. Hooray of December. Everything occurs in December in this storyline. Now this is, uh, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's kind of... It's kind of like something along the lines of Orcs Must Die, except much less focus on uh, quantity of, say, turrets. This this focuses a lot on specializations in traps. For instance, you can see recommended traps for a wolf. Uh, it can be different from recommended traps from something like a wisp or something along those lines. Uh, and you really, it's a, it's a lot more strategic 
than something like Orcs was to die. Although it's very Canadian and the story doesn't make, you know, all that much sense. But it's it's there and that's all that matters, I As suppose. I live and if it isn't my little sister, Josephine, what good wind blows you to the deepest, darkest forest to see your hermit brother? More like a storm, I'm afraid. The parish priest went crazy and jumped me like a demon when I was dusting the sacristy. I tried to fend him off with a candelabra, but a candle fell on the floor and the church caught fire. Ever since, the whole parish of Woolsvale says it's my fault. That's just crazy. Doesn't make any sense at all. But hey, don't just stand there like you're holding up the doorpost. The thing is, you see, Jacques, I'm not alone. Don't worry. It wasn't my idea to come here, brother. Without Joseph to protect me, the villagers would have torn me to pieces in the village square. He can't live there anymore either. Please, Jacques, for the love of our mother, let bygones be bygones and let us both stay here with you. Did you hear that? Sounds like a wolverine's outside spooking our horses. Since you're gonna be living off me, Josie, might as well make yourself useful and chase it away, will ya? Meanwhile, I'll heat up some tea for our sister. You best take good care of her. She's got a fever. And there we go. Into the first tutorial night we go. We don't actually get traps until, uh, night two, so... This is basically a tutorial on movement, camera, stuff like that. And, uh, melee combat. We have an axe, we also have a gun, but the gun, they're not gonna let us use the gun yet. The gun is actually very useful, but you have limited ammo and it takes forever to reload. I'll be damned. The horses are dead. And your wolverine looks a lot more like a wolf, Jackie boy. The pack must be close by. I concur. Uh, you can upgrade your weapon. Oddly enough, they say you can't live uh, at the town anymore, but you do actually- the town plays a major part in the game, because you have to go there to get supplies and upgrade your equipment and get blessings and stuff. Uh, there's a thing in the bottom left there that the game will explain a bit later, but that is the fear system. Uh, so long as you have more fear than your enemy, uh, they'll leave you alone. I can kind of demonstrate that here. He will just circle around me until his fear matches or is greater than mine, in which case he'll attack. Uh, the little Paul sign above him means he's the, the one that's being marked in the bottom left, so he's the next to attack. And we get money for killing people, which we can use for supplies. Uh, most of the traps I like using are free, uh, such as hanging net traps and bait and stuff. Uh, but there are some that do cost money. They're relatively cheap, though. A lot of the time, though, you will not get your money back. You can't live in the village, man. We just established that. Established, yes, that's a word. And I'm gonna leave these Combat. in, because it explains it pretty good. Your health is represented by the red bar at the bottom of the screen, while your stamina is represented by the green bar. You use stamina for each attack you make. If you run out of stamina, then your attacks are slow and weak. You accumulate rage for each attack you land on an enemy. The fire on the HUD and on your axe indicates that you have some rage built up. Right click to unleash all your rage. To evade enemy attacks, you can press the space bar to perform a dodge roll. And there you go. There are a lot of those. There are, in fact, one of those for, as far as I'm aware, every trap in the game. Uh, and as mentioned, I will be probably leaving in basically all of those. You can see how the Paul changes. The game will explain the fear system later. Nice miss, bro. Nice miss. Also, I should mention, uh, being near a fire actually increases uh, your fear level. You might notice I'm 22 over here because the bridge is on fire. Uh, but if I walk away from the bridge, say over here, you'll notice it drops back down to 20. This is pretty darn important uh, later on because you can actually make bonfires. Help! Help! Please, help Already at the waypoint. Good job, game. Help! Help! May Saint Anne have mercy on me! For the love of God, please help me! 
Hmm. We have to help this random guy stuck in a tree. You don't have any sort of real time limit for most of this, by the way. You can just casually walk to the next objective, but you can sprint with shift. I don't think I explained that. The rifle. To reload your rifle, hold down the control key. To reload faster, click the right mouse button repeatedly. This icon appears when your rifle is loaded. Your crosshair will be red if you have no target or if your target is out of range. It will be yellow if you're auto-locked onto an enemy. If you aim carefully for the head, the crosshair will turn green and you can make a headshot, causing maximum damage. Left click to fire. The amount of ammo you have remaining is shown at the bottom left of the screen. Hooray, rifles! Uh, you can just hold down control and he'll reload it on his own, but be prepared to hear me do this a lot. Assuming you can hear my mouse, uh, because doing this makes the reload substantially faster. But as he explained, it does have an auto lock, uh, so you don't have to aim perfectly, but you can aim manually for a Z head like that. And now I'm going to see if I can reload before this guy attacks me. And this is why the fear system is important, because if you're fighting a couple wolves, you have all the time in the world to reload and get a good shot off on the next one. Uh, the thing in the minimap, the little green circle that expanded when I fired, that is your sound range. Anything within that range will know you are there, uh, and they will run to where they last the heard the sound. Lord has sent you! Without your help, I would have been devoured like a rabbit! Hard to miss you, Miller. I think they heard you all the way in Quebec City. Be careful. There's a pack of rabid wolves around here. Really? How many? Dozens. Hundreds, maybe. They even blocked the road to my mill in the east. Go see by yourself if you want. As for me, I'm gonna run and hole up at the W. Hood Company. Okay. Pretty much everything that I've explained so far, the game is going to explain later, uh, probably in a bit better detail, but, you know, for people who want them, they'll be left in. And it's told me how to sprint now, I just realized, but I already knew that. Look at the wolves, there's three of them. And my gun is loaded, so this shouldn't be very hard. Fear factor. And now it's explaining the fear factor. When you're in combat, the fear factor meter appears at the bottom of the screen. This meter represents the time you have before your enemy's next attack. The more your enemies fear you, the greater the distance between both icons and the more time you have before the next attack. However, enemies aren't as afraid of you with each passing second, in which case the icons start to get closer. When your enemy's fear factor is equal to yours, the icons touch and your enemies attack. If you're running low on stamina, it's better to keep your distance and let it recharge. Be careful though, even if you have a higher fear factor, enemies will still attack you if you're too close. Hooray! To pull out the gun, he's too far away. Uh, you'll notice they won't actually run to me despite the fact they should be able to see me because my sound radius on the minimap there is really low. If I shoot, though, you'll notice it becomes massive, and then they all start chasing me. I've probably got enough time to reload. There's really uh, not much reason to reload during the tutorial, but hey, it's there. Let's go ahead and just kill this wolf. Ow. How very rude. Each time you hit an enemy, uh, the fear factor will decrease by one for each hit. You'll notice that fairly easily, but, you know, I killed all the words. There's no more wolves. I gotta go this way now. The real, the real meat and bones of this game is uh, setting up. For each night, you have to set up your traps and plan everything out, uh, which is pretty much where the majority of the gameplay or the majority of the strategy occurs. And then each night attack is basically management. just watching. Occur. When you attack multiple enemies at the same time, your chances for survival drop. So it's important to know how to intimidate your enemies to space out their attacks. There are two ways to intimidate your enemies. First, 
Every time an enemy takes damage, its fear factor decreases. Second, the icon at the bottom of the screen is one of your special abilities, the intimidating shout. Press the Q key to shout and intimidate your enemies. Ah! Don't forget, the distance between the two icons is how long you have before the next attack. Take this time to reload your gun and let your stamina recharge. Lastly, the paw symbol over an enemy's head means it's next to attack. Always pay attention to them. Ta-da! And now it's going to make me fight more wolves. Hooray! Wolves are the most basic of enemies. I probably should have had the gun out, but... Uh, you'll notice again I'm next to a fire. Fires are extremely helpful. They don't actually... I don't think they mention this until you actually unlock the bonfire, but... That was a bad shot, but hey! I hit him. And then I did that again. I do that fairly often. It wants me to intimidate him, so... That shout. That stew. Shout is actually more... It's actually useful for things other than intimidating people. You notice when I shout, just like when I shoot, the, uh, the massive sound increase there. And there's wolves in there. That's my brother. I turn my back for two seconds and he's in hot water. I better get back to the cabin as quick as I can. Hooray. Buildings are what you're protecting each night. Uh, if you... Camera. <laughs> uh, as you can see there, if the buildings get attacked, you lose the night and then have to retry. So that's, that's how that works. Enrages me. Sadly, I have to use that now. I'd rather uh, not use it now, but hey! Basically what it does is it fills up your rage. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shout so these people stop attacking me. These people, I mean wolves. Shout, I think, just takes off... Uh, I don't know how much exactly it takes off, but it takes off a pretty hefty chunk of the enemy's fear level there. Hello. I really like how the game feels, like uh, in that video you saw, uh, the tutorial video of pack management, when there's a, like a bunch of wolves circling you. I mean, they, they look like wolves. That's what they do. They circle you. By the way, I believe that one was an alpha wolf. There are alpha wolves. A great wolf, whatever they're called. There's a lot of enemy types in this, actually. Which is, I suppose, good. Hooray! Also, a lot of talking during the tutorials. They speak to me. I hear them. But especially, I, I see. I see the beasts. They were sent by the devil. What happened? I don't know. She started shaking like a crazy person. Then she let out an awful scream and fell to the ground. Damn it, I asked you to watch her. There was nothing I could do. Go get Dr. Lamontang. I don't know what happened, but the bridge to Wolf's Vale was burnt down. We'll have to wait till morning. No, not morning. And here's our second enemy of the game. The were actually technically the third enemy. Uh, the werewolf. Wolves and great wolves have the same general characteristics, just one of them has more health than the other one. And more fear, for that matter, if I'm not mistaken. More, more fear number, less fear of you, I guess, is how you would describe that? Not really sure, but My whatever. Lord, forgive me. I was overcome with desire. What have I done? What have I done? You're only a man, LCR. Who's there? Who are you? But you just now invited me. When you tried to attack your servant Josephine, after she'd refused your advances. I thought we had some affinities. But when you left the fire spreading your church after Josephine hit you with the candelabra, when you accused her in front of all the villagers of the crime that you had in fact committed, that was when I knew we were going to do great things together. <laughs> and that is what brings me here to make an offer you can't possibly refuse concerning your lovely and inaccessible servant. Oh. 
And here's strategy mode, which will be a separate video, so I'll see you then.